steeped in the history of archery, what better place for stage three of the Hyundai Archery World Cup and what a location. Welcome to Antalya. It's time to find out who will book their places at the World Cup finals in September on Compound Saturday. We look down the 50 meter range in pristine conditions here on the Mediterranean coast. Well, the weather, I think, is a little higher than 24 degrees, but that breeze is keeping us and the athletes a little bit more comfortable than it was earlier on today. So we've got uh, the newest of the events in world archery, the compound mixed team bronze and gold medal matches. And shortly after that, we'll go to the all important individual medals here on a beautiful afternoon. I'm Karen Bashir and I'm joined in the commentary box by Mackenzie Brown. It's a little bit cooler than it was earlier on. It's definitely a little bit more mild as far as the temperature goes, but the wind has picked up for this afternoon, so I think we're going to have some challenging matches today. Well, as we look down the range, we are preparing ourselves for the bronze medal match in the um, well, a fun mixed compound event. It's uh, exciting. It's very fast. One man, one woman on a team, and uh, it's really taken to the audience. Of course, it's the losing semi-finalists who will shoot off first for the bronze medal. And as you can see, Italy at the top lost out to Denmark. And it was a shoot off between Turkey and South Africa. And the Turkish team lost out there. So it will be Italy versus Turkey for bronze in a mixed team event. And here come the athletes. Turkish team and they're here to support yes in Boston the 24 year old with uh, also 24 years old Mohammed Yetim and they're up against Italy on the left the 32 year old Marcella Tonioli uh, with 40 year old Sergio Pagni a very experienced pair on the Italian side but a young and talented Turkish team Mackenzie I think Italy is definitely favored to win um, for this match, but again, anything can happen. I think, like you said, there's a lot of talent on Turkey's side of the field, and they have the home crowd advantage. I think um, their their family and friends are here to cheer them on and might give them that push to be able to edge out Italy. Well, we're just about ready for this bronze medal match. Turkey on that target two will get us off the mark. Now will that crowd get behind them? start for uh, Boston. Well, on average, 20 seconds per arrow allowed. In fact, he's 80 seconds in total. And the Turkish pair have left themselves with a couple of seconds spare. So we switch over to Italy. Nice. 
well. It's the score the same as Turkey, but they are 10 seconds shy of the time left for Turkey. I wonder if that's going to play a part in this first end. So I think what you can expect from the Italian team when they first step up is I think Marcella is going to step up on the line and shoot a really fast shot and then hop off the line quick because her first shot was a little bit slower than what she's used to. Uh, Sergio is a slower shooter. He likes to take his time. He likes to finesse the shot. So I think that th that her, uh, Marcella needs to give him that opportunity because that's what makes him such a strong teammate. Well, they've got an opportunity here to go too clear after the first Gee, end. Gee, it Gee, was Gee, a quick Gee. one, but uh, only 12 seconds left on the Gee, clock. And this setup is going to have to be quick. He's going to have to release fast here. He does, and that's the result. And when it was an opportunity to steal a couple of points, Italy have lost a point. And Mackenzie. Do you think it was all down to that very first yeah, shot from Tony Early? I do think so. I think she held a little bit longer, and when there is wind to contest with, it's so crucial to keep to your timing. Even speed it up a little bit, because then your arrow is way less um, moved by the wind and affected. Yeah, and uh, here we have a comparison of those first arrows. The four yellows uh, all above the horizontal line of the spider, and uh, the Turkish arrows all below it. Grouping slightly better from the Italians, but uh, that long hold, and in fact, uh, we saw Tonioli's hair just wavering, her purple hair wavering in the wind. She definitely likes to use her hair as an expression. Um, it changes all the time, and it's super cool to see how she changes that. Well, it also gives us an indication of how breezy it is and how consistent the wind is uh, out there when she's uh, shooting. So the arrows have been retrieved from the first end. It's very difficult to describe. It, that, uh, that gives you some idea of the distance they're shooting at, but Trust me, when you're standing on that shooting line, for mere mortals like myself, <laughs> it's very difficult just to see the target. That was quicker and straight down the middle. Mm -hmm. And see, if you look at the clock that's counting down on your screen, it shows that she took 20 seconds, which is what, if you are sparing about your time, is what you take per archer. Sergio. Yeah, so she's afforded See, him that time. Yep, they've left themselves a, uh, a little bit more time than they did on that first end. So the Italians have zoned in. What can the Turkish team do? No. First arrows were all a little low, so they've made some adjustments. Sergio still cut a little bit on his time for his last arrow. But I think he has enough time to put one in the middle. Just like that. Yeah. Well predicted there. One thing that's fun to watch on um, compound form is how everybody manipulates the release aid. Um, everybody does it different. Everybody uses a different type of release aid um, so that 
most of these people yeah. are shooting with either a, a hinge or a button. Um, the uh, Yatim from Turkey is using a hinge, and something that's interesting is his release aid is really far out on his fingers. He's got very little uh, curl on the release aid, so I think that's just for him to be able to micromanage how he's making that shot go off. Well, whatever the aids are, they both scored a 39 in that second end. Turkey keep that uh, lead of just one point. And uh, a very, very good start from Italy. Just dropped the single point on the third arrow. Turkey recovered from the first nine to score two tens. Here is Tonioli's starter. And here's the two tens that Turkey scored at the conclusion of that end. 39 apiece. But Turkey leading by the single point. So we're at the halfway stage of this mixed team bronze medal match on compound Saturday here in Antalya. The third stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. And it's Italy up against Turkey. Marcello Tognoli started the match with a slow release, which put the Italians under pressure. Now she has to shoot her finest arrows. Still really good. I think, uh, again, just a little bit long on the hold. I think she can maybe pick it up a little bit. But if you're hitting a 10, why why change what you're <laughs> doing? And if you think it's all down to this breeze, it's just it's just starts to get a little. Well, it's it's not regular. It's it's not a to the breeze. There's a few blustery moments every now and again. Perfect score though from the Italians. Put the pressure on Turkey. And they match it. So some something like a one point lead is where you're seeing if if Turkey makes a mistake by shooting a nine or or something along those lines. And Italy is really trying to stay perfect at this point. Both teams are trying to stay perfect, <laughs> obviously. But right now it's it's kind of seeing who's going to make the mistake because I think both teams have found the center. Yeah, they seem to have zoned in, uh, but there's very little time left here for Pagny. Nine. Oh, it gets a nine. Better result than the, the last arrow he had yep. a crunch for time for. Yeah, got an eight in that first end when time was against him. A nine that time. But it is an opportunity for Turkey to extend their lead. Twenty four, she really is a class act, isn't she? Yeah. So some a term they use in golf is pro side, which is into the wind. And that's where Yasim is is she's sitting on that right side of the wind across right to left wind. Um, just impeccable shooting from Turkey there, perfect score. Uh, fist pumps all around, and you've got to say the crowd here have been very respectful of the opponents uh, that Turkey have faced, uh, but they're now starting to get a little bit more lively, and that perfect score, well here it is, gets them off the mark, and yes, in Boston really is a class act, she's so solid, and uh, she's matched by uh, Mohamed Yetim, who 
really stepped up to the mark at this event. Just checking her arrows there. Well, it looks like they've cleared the targets now. The range is all but ready to shoot. The fans, young and old, are enjoying not only the weather here in Antalya, but also the fine archery that they've got. And, of course, they get to support a home team. Italy, though, they're well up for the challenge. Trailing by two. This is the final end of the bronze medal match in a mixed team event. Nice. Mackenzie, I've noticed that uh, not only is Tonioli's hair uh, a different color all the time, uh, the sight and her fingernails are also painted different colors. And yeah. her teammate here has got a yellow sight so something along with being perfectionists as archers is we really enjoy uh, color coordination. Uh, we have a choice, um, most of the professional athletes, when we, we get to order new equipment, what's our color coordination going to be? How are we going to make everything match together? And it, it's really fun to do and, and try to come up with something unique. Um, so I think the, the Italian team is is definitely matching it up. Yeah, for it. Austin there with her I think that turquoise. nine will have an asterisk next to it just because it is so close to that ten line. Oh. Oh. Well, that one's in the ten. Yeah, notice that Boston's uh, bow is turquoise to go with the turquoise coast that sits just to the right hand side of this target range. Big arrows here from Italy. No. Not happy with that. Apparently, we really want a 10 here to put some sort of pressure on Turkey. Yeah. Gets that 10. But a 1 5 2 to finish for the Italians. Well, Turkey with two tens can get a one five five, so they have wiggle room. And yes, in Boston, will shoot first. <laughs> Pressure all off now. An eight is all that's required to win for Turkey and take the bronze medal. <laughs> at that he gets a nine that's more than enough and turkey well they win 154 to 152 and really it was all about the very first arrow from italy yeah i think so i think it was a, a good portion of that as well as time management and wind management there was there were gusts out here on the field but not anything to aim super far off for and so I think that that cost the Italian team a couple of points and uh, Turkey capitalized and ends up with the win. Yeah, it was a, a brave performance after that long first hold from Tonioli, but there is confirmation that uh, Yesim Bostan and Mohamed Yetim of Turkey have taken bronze on compound Saturday in the mixed team event here in Antalya. They're looking down the range and they're just waiting for the target judge to confirm it and uh, he has done that now much to the delight of the Turkish fans in the crowd. So whilst it was all down to the first shot from the Italians you've got to say the Turkish athletes, well you said it Mackenzie, they zoned in and stayed there. 
I think they had a couple of wavering arrows at the beginning, but so did Italy, and that gave Turkey an open door to be able to just capitalize and shoot a bunch of tens. Yeah, fist bumps all round as always. Yes, in Boston, a class act. But I've got to say, she, I think she was matched by Mohamed Yetin and uh, those lovely last two arrows and the high five. In celebration, they will be standing on the bronze medal step later on today. So it's a beautiful location, a slightly unusual one as well on the coastline sometimes affected by the breeze coming up now it's the gold medal match in the mixed team event on compound saturday again shooting over 50 meters the wind is great for that kite and it's really good for the comfort of both the uh, athletes and the commentators so the two teams who've made it through here have uh, had an interesting battle denmark and a tight one against France in the quarters, going on to beat Italy. And the Republic of South Africa came through Chinese Taipei and then Turkey to make this gold medal match. So coming up now, it's the gold medal contest in the mixed team event between South Africa and Denmark. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the mixed team gold medal match. So here they come for gold. On target number two. Representing Republic South of South Africa, Africa leading out Janine the uh, gold medal finalist. Janine Van Kradenberg and a Ruben Brent Meek in their lineup. Curtsy then for Janine. Mm -hmm. Very polite. And here's the 23-year-old pairing of Tanya Jensen and Stefan Hansen of Denmark. Their respective rankings are three and a nine in the world up against uh, Janine Van Kranenberg, 117, and Ruben Brink Meek, who's 95th in the men's rankings. I've got to say that Denmark are the strong favorites, right? I think they are, but I think it still will be a really tight match. South Africa definitely proved themselves to get to this stage, so I think that they should be you know, respected a little bit more that they're at this gold medal final. You don't make it easy to get to the gold medal final. And the pressure's all off them, really, because you know, I don't think that, you know, with the greatest respect, and people expected them to be here, but they've shot really well here in Turkey, they've well, made it through, and there's a great dynamic between the pairing goals, watching them warming up. With with no pressure makes you a very dangerous team com to be competing against, so we'll see how they open up. Well, South Africa will get us underway for the gold medal match here. We start with Ruben Brent Meek. Pretty good start. A great start from the South Africans. Just a little pull there from Tanya Jensen at the end of her action. Jensen yeah. pulls it back into the ten ring. Like 10 seconds. Oh, it's a great start from South Africa. A perfect 40.
FX Stærk, Tanja. 30 sekunder, fin tid. Tanja, du har tiden på mig. Well, FX Jensen stack, found the middle and uh, Hansen repeated the 10 he scored. So they only dropped one point, Denmark, but South Africa have come here and they mean business. Janine van Kradenberg and Ruben Brent Meek scoring a perfect 40. And there is the first arrow from the South African youngster. And it's definitely a unique action that Janine van Kradenberg has got. But it's effective. And the South Africans lead by one. And we take a look back at uh, all of the arrows in at that first uh, end. I mean, just impeccable shooting from both teams. I think uh, the first shot from from Tanya was just a cider arrow. She might have felt a little time pressure or something along those lines, and they're back in the middle. I think this is going to be a super tight match. Just like we said, I think when there's no pressure, like on the maybe on the South African team, they're pretty dangerous, and they've shown that in this first end. Yeah, and I mean, it's interesting now because obviously things switch around, and uh, the Danes will shoot first, and that gets it gives them the opportunity to put, to put the pressure on South Africa if they can. Uh, they have zoned into the middle, and they shoot a perfect uh, 20 to get us off the mark in this second end. We'll see how the South Africans respond. Yes, go to so the buzzer, his declaration that the range is safe to shoot, and Tanya Jensen will get us underway in the second end of this mixed team gold medal match. FX, Dax Dave. A bit of a grimace there. Like the rest of the shot in Janine. Well, there is the response from South Africa. Denmark did find the middle twice. Yeah, each archer has their own unique process that they go through, and it's got a. Uh, it's best when it's almost robotic. I've got to say, Tanya Jensen's is almost, well, I don't want to use the word fussy, but a little bit more complicated. There's more yeah. steps in her process. And sometimes it's not a consistency. Sometimes it's a, oh, something went wrong. Okay, I'm going to fix it. Um, it. I haven't watched her shot enough to notice that, but I, I think that there's just a way you like to have it, and I think it's okay to take that extra second and feel comfortable if it's going to make you no. shoot a better shot. Well, Denmark scored a perfect 40 to match that of South Africa in the first end, and Brent Meek has dropped the very first point for South Africa. Excellent. Well, they've scored the same number of points, 79 apiece, both dropping just a single point. Denmark in the first end, South Africa in the second end, and Tanya Jensen now, she's got a unique process, but it is working for her. Shooting a 10 there and another one here. Almost the exact same spot, just so close to one another. Um, if we're being picky, I would put maybe a click in my sight to make it go into the <laughs> X-ring, but uh, honestly, 10s are 10s. And I think we have to keep in perspective here that both teams have only dropped 
one point. I know, it's incredible Over, shooting. you know, 16 arrows, it's really good shooting. Yeah, and dropping just a single point means that they're you know, missing the 10 by just, well, fractions of centimeters here. But that's the difference between gold and silver. It's in fact a game of millimeters archery. And I mean, we talked about um, actions and everyone has their own process. I've got to say, uh, the South African Janine Van Cranenberg has a very unusual one. She, it's almost like she's drawing, at the first she draws the bow down into her chest and then lifts it up, which I haven't seen uh, very much on in the archery field. So Brent Beek yes. gets us underway in the third end with a perfect 10. And you mentioned her draw before. A draw like this is something that you might see from, honestly, from a younger archer or someone who's sh shooting quite a bit of poundage. I'm not sure what her draw weight is. Uh, so that might be some, some effect. But it also might be she grew up doing this, this routine and that's what she really likes to do. I think Tanya took my advice yeah, and so maybe gave it a click there. Just about to say, she must have been listening to you. Very solid action from Stefan Hansen. And again, we're seeing such high scoring in this third end. No points dropped so far. Well, perfect score from South Africa. Pressure back on to Denmark. and dropping into the nine and well they seem to be taking in turns here to drop just one point uh, it's incredible stuff and it's just one point in it but South Africa are back in the lead and look at how quality this has been this is all of the arrows yeah I think you can kind of see that we are by the sea uh, you've got a little bit a uh, a little bit of a left group on that that ten ring, and we've got a couple of strays out there to the to the low right, but um, really solid shooting from both teams. Yeah, incredible stuff. And South Africa, well, they dropped one point. In fact, it was Brent Meek there who dropped a point in the last end, but these two tens to finish things off, uh, and a well-deserving high five. There's a real interesting dynamic between the 40-year-old Janine Van Cranenberg and 20-year-old Ruben Brent Meek, and it works really well. Watching them on the practice field earlier on today, it, there was a, a, like almost like a silent communication between the two that just looked very calm and very relaxed. They lead by a point here as we go in to the final end, and it's Tony Jensen for Denmark to shoot first. I see what you mean about Tanya's shot, and it's because she has one more step than what you're used to seeing. Uh, she aligns her peep sight. So 
in the way she sets up her equipment, she might have a little bit more of a twist in her main string. And so it may the peep sight may not line up quite right when she draws the bow back naturally, so she adds that twist to be able to see correctly. Well, it worked well for her and for her teammate. Perfect start. Excellent. Brink Meek follows up with another 10. South Africa just have to match Denmark. Excellent. And that's exactly what they've done here. Well, another nine, and this is a massive opportunity for South Africa. Ruben Brent Meek, can he score another ten here? Well, he's put it in the nine, but they still have a chance to win. A 10 for Janine van Kranenberg, and she will have this one for South Africa. Ten. Oh, it's called a 10. It's a high five from the South African pairing. It was very, very close to the line, but it looks like that won't even go to a measure. South Africa have, well, against the odds, taken out Denmark. But what a high quality match that was. South Africa winning 158 to 157. Like we said, it, it makes them dangerous when they're out here and no pressure. And they shot insane scores out here. Just three points from Denmark and only two points from South Africa were dropped from a perfect score. Uh, there we have confirmation. Janine van Kradenberg and Ruben Brent Meek will be standing on top of the podium a little bit later on here in Antalya. And congratulations to them. What fabulous shooting from the pair from South Africa to take out the much fancied Denmark. Uh, it was a high quality match, Janine van Kradenberg there, shooting down the range. Unusual draw, Brent Meek matching her tens as well. Denmark, well, they shot fantastically well as well. Tony Jensen and Stefan Hansen, but that was the 10 that secured the gold medal for South Africa. And the high fives, I don't think they can quite believe it, but they will be on top of the podium here in Antalya, and uh, they are the surprise package. Well, we talked about the conditions being good for high scoring, and uh, that match was certainly proof of it. So the uh, mixed team medals are sorted. Coming up very soon, we'll move on to the individual tournament, starting with the women's individual compound bronze, and then gold medal match. Well, it's certainly uh, certainly got a, just a little bit breezier, which has made it just a little bit more comfortable, Mackenzie. It is more comfortable with, with the temperature, but I also think that wind is, is something every archer is wary of and making sure they pay attention to where they're aiming. Yeah, and you can see here, we're looking at, oh, you can see the sea glistening there. The sun's shining that bright. Uh, it's a beautiful location for an international sports event. And it's time to congratulate the medal winners. Let's welcome them out onto the field of play. It's time for the medal ceremony in the mixed team event on Compound Saturday here in Antalya.
medals will be presented by World Archery First Vice President, Mario Scarcella. Gifts will be presented by Turkish Archery Federation board member, Hakan Chakarolu. Bronze medal, representing Turkey. For the bronze medalists in the mixed team event for Turkey. The delight of the home crowd. Yes, in Boston on the left, yes, Mohammed Yeti on the right, picking up their bronze medals. Mohammed Yeti. Silver medal, representing Denmark. Well, Denmark may well have fancied themselves for the gold medal here Tanya in Antalya Jensen. in this mixed team event with Tanya Jensen and Stefan Hansen in the lineup. And uh, shooting Hansen. as well as they did, a 157 out of 160, perhaps might have won them the gold medal on another day. But it wasn't to be for Denmark. Jensen and Hansen collect silver. Gold medal, representing South Africa. Well, I think the world will be looking at this pair now, going into the future. Janine van Kranenberg Janine shot a 701 in the ranking round. Ruben Brent Meek shot a 708. That gave them a combined Ruben rank Brent in the mixed team event of number two with a 1409. And they've taken out some big names on the way, Chinese Taipei and Turkey, and then Denmark in the gold medal match. The Republic of South Africa, Janine Van Kradenberg and Ruben Brent Meek are the champions of the mixed team event on Compound Saturday here in Antalya. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm round of applause to our athletes. Well, there we have it. Uh, the Republic of South Africa take the gold medal in the mixed team event. Denmark collecting silver and Turkey with the bronze medal. Always good fun, the mixed team event. But uh, it's crunch time and now. Because we switch our attention to the individual tournament. Here are the current standings in the women's compound Hyundai Archery World Cup rankings. After two events, 
Alexis Ruiz is at top of the pile. The stage winner, Sarah Lopez and So Chai Wan qualify directly for the World Cup finals in Moscow in September. So there are places up for grabs and the gold medalist at each stage gets an automatic spot. And then we move on to selection by rankings. So as we get a great view of the range here, we prepare for the bronze medal match in the compound women's event here in Antalya. It's the third stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup. It's a beautiful location. And this is how these individuals have got here. And of course, it is the losing semi-finalists again who face each other for the bronze medal. Victoria Balzanova of Russia, at 31 years old, takes on the 29-year-old athlete from Chinese Taipei, Huang Yi Ju. The athletes are just about ready to come out, so let's go down to the call room and bring them out onto the field of play. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the compound women's bronze medal match. On target number one. Well, a big chair as there is a the big Russian contingent Federation. of Chinese Victoria Taipei athletes in the crowd. But first off, we introduce Victoria Balzonova. On target number two. She shot a 698 in the ranking round to be ranked eighth. And Huang Yi Ju shot a 693, the Chinese Taipei athlete. Came through the ranking round, ranked 22nd. Zanova took out Minarik of uh, Croatia and Ruiz was her Vanka the victor in the semi-final. She lost out 146 to 145. Huang came through Paige Pierce before losing to Wenzel of the Republic of South Africa in the semi-finals. But they have a chance for a bronze medal here. So Balzanova gets the individual women's bronze medal match underway. This is yeah. Fabulous start from the Russian. Responding with a nine, but a good sighter. This is yeah. Mackenzie, the pace goes up a little bit when we move from team to individual. Yeah, it's a little bit faster, and the clock resets every single time, so you get a fresh 20 every single time you draw up, which is yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Your favorite word, bo Kwondo being employed there by the athlete from Chinese Taipei. Steely. And a perfect start from the Russian. She does find the middle in the end, but she's dropped two points. Uh, the Akunta score system in compound archery means that she can claw those points back, but it was a cracking start from the Russian. Yeah, very good shooting. I think she was a little unsure about that last arrow, uh, but really good uh, final position for that third arrow and just really good shooting from both athletes, honestly. Yeah, but Balzanova started off with that 10, right? Well, X and then just corrected a little bit and actually got further away and then another mini correction with the grouping so tight getting off to a good start is so crucial in uh, compound archery because of the accumulative score if you just keep building by one point or stay matching with your uh, opponent 
the match is yours. I honestly think it depends on the day as well. I, I think it's always good to start with a good lead and then stay consistent throughout. But sometimes it's one or the other. Sometimes it's finishing really strong. Sometimes it's starting out really strong. It really just depends on who you're playing against and, and how you're shooting that day. Well, a cracking start from Victoria Balzanova. She leads by two, so Huang Yiju of Chinese Taipei will get us underway in the second end. Those are going to be needed to be able to get some sort of a, a gap in that lead. It's gone a bit awry, and you could see the bow wobbling there. This is impeccable from the Russian. Next, back in the middle. See the stabilizer moving just a little bit, but nothing outside the 10 ring for Victoria Balzanova. There are some days where it doesn't matter what you do, those arrows are just gonna go in the middle and she's shooting those kind of shots today. It's, it's right where it needs to be, just a strong execution solid tens for the archer from Russia. Yeah, and as we often say, it, it sometimes comes down to just one arrow, and that middle arrow from uh, Huang Yiju uh, was the one that dropped out. So she starts here with a 10, and she looks like she's right in the middle, and then that one drifting off to the right, and then back to the middle. I mean, that one arrow could pay the price. I just don't think she was quite ready, like settled and ready to shoot that second shot, which is so crucial when it comes to shooting a compound bow, is to feel comfortable, feel like you're right in the middle, and execute the way you want it to go off. Well, a perfect 60 from Balzanova is what's facing Huang Yiju. She has 56. She's dropped just four points but trails now by those four points. She'll shoot first at the start of the third end here in the women's individual compound bronze medal match. The tens that the archer from Chinese Taipei does shoot are just right there in the X ring though. That's really cool to see that they're just so centered. Longer hold from Balzanova this time. And she tries to pull that one across, and she's drifted off into the eight. Just pulling that one across. So she has the potential to claw back one point of the deficit here. But Balzanova needs a 10. No. And she doesn't minimize the damage and gives away two points. So Huang Yiju has a mini reprieve, still training by two after three ends of this women's bronze medal match. So often it's just those one or two arrows that make a difference. Here we see a comparison of all the arrows so far, Mackenzie. 
Yeah, I think you've got uh, the archer from Chinese Taipei a little bit lower on the group in her uh, quote-unquote mistake arrows that are low. Um, and then you've got uh, the archer from Russia. Again, that one errant arrow, the eight out left. Um, just a little uncharacteristic for how many tens we've seen from her today. But the athlete from Chinese Taipei shooting in the tens and that was the eight that you referred to drifting off to the left and the final ten there the one thing that i think is good from chinese taipei is that she's staying pretty calm yeah. cool and collected being patient letting the tens come because it's so easy when you shoot a a bad shot an eight uh to to get frustrated with yourself feel like you need to do something different but she was patient she shot her tens, and then, lo and behold, her opponent had a few mistake shots herself. And to start the fourth end, Huang Iju trying to fight back against Victoria Balzanova. Great view here. Almost exactly what the archer's seeing. Yes. Still trying to favour that drag across, isn't she? She's not exactly happy as she was in the first end. And saw the look on the face often gives the game away. Uh, has dropped out into a nine. Can Balzanova capitalize? Nine. Well, she doesn't, but scores level means Balzanova goes into the final end with that two point lead. And we talked about uh, leads being so important uh, in compound archery, but. Does the two points feel a little bit bigger in the final end? Two points definitely does. One point feels like a paper thin gap, but two points definitely, fe I'm thinking the Russian archer will feel a little bit more comfortable going into this last end, but that can make it a dangerous place to be. Yeah, well, we look at Huang's 10 there, followed by Balzanova's. And I mean, they, they are shooting so well. If you just take away those one, uh, what the furthest arrow from the center from each archer, uh, the groupings are outstanding. Pr pretty good, yeah. yeah. But uh, Balzanova is the one with one foot on the podium. This for the bronze medal in the women's individual compound here in Antalya. Huang Iju. Trailing by two, we'll shoot first. That's a good marker. Puts the pressure on the Russian. Wow, look at that. Those two points have been clawed back in one arrow. And the momentum is with the athlete from Chinese Taipei. Beautiful 10 from Huang. Zanova back in the middle. Well, the pressure will really be on the Russian if Huang can land a 10 here. And she does. What a thrilling finale. Balzanova needs a 10 to force a shoot off. And she shot a nine. What a remarkable turnaround in the last six arrows. Huang Yi Ju 
She lo was lost at sea. Then Balzanova threw in an, an eight that no one predicted. And then did it again in the final end, starting with an eight. The momentum shifted to Huang Yiju and the victory sign is well deserved as well as the phew. How did I do that? She is the bronze medalist here in Antalya. She'll be on the podium for the third stage of the Hyundai Archery World Cup and takes a hat load of points with her as well. Confirmation from the target judge and a happy contingent of athletes from Chinese Taipei. That was such a close match. I think the, like I said, going into that last end, I think the Russian archer maybe felt just a little too comfortable with her two-point lead. And I, I think that's where you found that mistake with that eight. Just great shooting. Yeah. Unpredictable ending there. And the Russian, it looked like she had it. And she looked so solid at the start. It right in the middle. X ring, 10 ring for the first two ends. Nothing outside the middle. And the athlete from Chinese Taipei, Hang Yiju, starts with a 10, drifts out to an eight and open the door, trailed by four points. But this eight played its part in the final end. And that was the gold medal, sorry, the bronze medal winning shot. And uh, no surprise that they are a happy bunch in the Chinese Taipei camp. Huang Hiju takes the bronze medal here in the women's individual compound event on Compound Saturday in Turkey. Well, the wind blowing across the field of play as we look down the range and prepare for the gold medal match the women's individual compound. And uh, there's a bit of a story to tell here as well. Teenage Sensation has taken the archery world by storm this year. It's her debut season, the 19 year old, Alexis Ruiz has come through the field here. She's picked up two bronze medals this season and she's in the final here going for gold. She goes up against Danelle Wenzel from South Africa. They've had an interesting tournament here and a good one. But Wenzel is up against the lady of the moment in compound archery, Alexis Ruiz of the USA. Two bronze in Shanghai and Medellin. Can Alexis Ruiz get the title here in Antalya? Let's welcome them out. Well, we're actually looking back at Ruiz has had a fantastic season. It's been an incredible debut season, in fact, for Alexis Ruiz. Two World Cup stages and a bronze in both in Medellin and in Shanghai, as well as medals in the team and the mixed team events of both. Now she goes for gold in Antalya and a confirmed place at the finals in Moscow. Let's welcome both the athletes out onto the field of play. Well, the coaches are out. The judge is out. The wind has died down just a little bit. Oh, there are the athletes, they are waiting to come out onto the field of play. It's the gold medal between Alexis Ruiz of the USA and Danielle Wenzel of the Republic of South Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the compound women's gold medal match. On target number one, representing the United States of America. Well, we look at uh, the figures Ruiz. here. Uh, 9.6 average arrow for Ruiz in her On debut senior season. Two. Representing South Africa, Danelle Wenzel. Danelle Wenzel. Well, she's got medals on the World Cup stage. But Alexis Ruiz has all of her medals, <laughs> more of them, but they're all just this season. 
Yeah, really incredible shooting from Alexis. And I think the thing that maybe gave her the ability to come to so many of these uh, medal matches in her first year, she practiced against the matches that were going on last year and the year before. She was at home practicing shooting arrow for arrow against the people who were shooting on these fields. So she knows what it's like to be on a finals field. And uh, this is her third time this year, three out of three. Well, I'm sure that Vincent will have something to say about this, but Alexis Ruiz it gets us underway for this gold medal match. Yeah. 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 That is a cracking start. Ali, solid. Okay, just left. Okay. Five. It's a longer hold there, and you could tell she wasn't happy with how that uh, shot was executed. Well, Ruiz going 10-9-8. The second arrow from Wenzel looks like it's going to go to a measure. It looks like a nine as well. I, I think that'll go to a measure also. Well, first uh, three arrows from both archers shot, and at the moment uh, the provisional score is 28 for Wenzel, but they are going to go to a measure. Let's uh, see if we can catch it the target judge well it looks like I'm going to stay with the coach there he looks very calm as well I think but that's really important is to have your coach be calm because your heart rate is going high and you're you're nervous so I think that your coach being calm really helps to calm you down and, and take away the nerves well well, it's not what we're expecting, but uh, Daniel Wenzel, well, we're looking down, right down the range here, and it has been confirmed that that middle arrow from the South African was an eight, and uh, all of the scores are all level. Just 24 years old, Daniel Wenzel shot a 6.99 in the ranking round to be ranked seventh, and then came through Toya Ellison of Slovenia in the quarterfinals, and then Huang of Taipei in the semis. There is his route was a 701 in the ranking round and then she took out Janine van Kradenberg in the quarterfinals and Balzanova of Russia in the semis they were all square after the first end as we return to the range Ruiz to shoot first in the women's individual compound gold medal match in the second end no. okay just left it's win Long hold again. Yeah. But it works. I think the wind is picking up just a little bit here. We might have a few gusts coming through, so I think that's why you're noticing a few more arrows okay. off kilter. Well, Rose was drifting here. left a little bit. That one goes low, and it looks like she is adjusting her sight. Keep it in the middle next to you. Nice. Okay, just left. Like a stark in your Rahan, fully on to your sir, Vafon. Well, it looks to me like uh, there's a little bit of tension out there on the range. And uh, Ruiz, who's had such a cracking season, gets herself another individual medal at the third stage of the tournament, having got two bronzes. But it's this 24-year-old who is 
really living up to expectations. She, she seems to be handling the pressure better. We get two tens in that end from her. And in fact, it was an X and a 10, sandwiching a nine. And she just seems to be just a little bit more in control. Yeah, I think it's just more relaxed that you're, is what you're seeing from Danielle versus uh, Alexis, I think, wants this gold right now. I think she really wants to be able to say she's got herself locked in, even though she's locked in for the final. I think she wants to uh, even more so shoot really well um, in this gold medal final and I think she may be putting just a little bit more pressure on herself. Yeah, weight of expectation is a strange yeah, thing. But right now what needs to happen to keep Alexis in this game, she has to start shooting some tens and then Danielle has to shoot a few that are out. Start of the third end of the individual gold medal match. It really starts off with a 10, and that will settle her nerves. Pull your hand in your gezicht, in your rug, and trace the process. 8, 7, 6, 5. Well done, Danielle. Danielle, give me a click on your side. Yep. Ah. Right there, a little bit closer to the X on that one. Nieja, ah, Sieva. Well, Ruiz has landed two tens, and that's put a little bit of pressure on Vensel, who's uh, got an eight asterisk, so that will go to a measure. X right there. Woo. I'd be checking those knocks and fletchings. That was really tight grouping and, and definitely the type of shooting that we've come to know and expect from Alexis. Yeah, and the coach probably there to settle her nerves. Six, five, four, three, two, one. So back more towards the center, but uh, a three-point swing for the American in the third end was just what she needed. And just like that, she's drawn level. Now that is provisional, because we will have a measure on that Daniel Vensel's second arrow, currently marked as an eight. Now the question is, will it get marked up to a nine? Let's have a listen. Ten, nine, nine. Sounded like that was going to get marked up to a nine. But the grouping from Ruiz, as you suggested, Mackenzie, is a bit more what we're used to. And I think this is probably one of the finest groupings I've ever seen in an individual match. Yeah, really solid shooting. I think you could fit all three of those arrows on a quarter. Um, just, just really good shooting and, and what I think she expects of herself and what we kind of expect from her now as well with how well she shot this season. Well, it has been confirmed that Vensel's eight has been marked up to a nine. So what was a tied score means the South African still leads, but only by one. And the wind is behind Ruiz. here left. Oh, yeah, that's a great view yeah. down the range. I mean, how close is that to, to what you're looking at when you're shooting down the range? Uh, it's pretty close. It looks a little bit fishbowled to me, like it's, it's further away than it actually no. is. I think it's just because we're so used to 
the distance oh, that we shoot. Yeah, that it, you've got it a hawk feels kind of like eyesight, that's why. The 28 for Ruiz, and an opportunity for Vensel oh, to extend the lead the again here. Yes. And she does oh, just that. A perfect 30 from the South African, and she's back in a three point lead, crucially going into the final end. And there's a smile on her face for good reason. So three tens from Ruiz in the last end. Uh, looked like she was getting the win behind her, but look at Vensel's grouping across the match here. Yeah, great shooting. I think uh, grouping is going low left for for her, but still really centered uh, grouping that's going really well for her. It was that last end though, when uh, it looked like Ruiz was getting the win behind her, that Vensel found the middle herself and a perfect 30 really puts her in a commanding position. And remember, the winner of the stage here goes through to the final in Moscow automatically. So the final end here in Antalya, the women's individual gold medal match. And it's Daniel Vensel who's leading. So Alexis Ruiz, the teenage sensation from the USA, will shoot first. Yep, next. Good shot. Yep. Uh. Yep, X, come the spider. Stark in your rachan. Yaka, ah, siava, says. Well, perfect start from both athletes. Yep, good job. And a great finish from Alexis Ruiz. She knows she's through to the finals in Moscow with her ranking points. She can't be overtaken, but she wanted the stage win. An eight is all Wenzel needs, and she finishes with a perfect 30 as well. Daniel Wenzel has taken gold here in Antalya. All the pressure was on Alexis Ruiz, but I think perhaps put on by herself. Daniel Wenzel came out, and after a shaky first end from both athletes, she was the one that held her nerve, and she's taken the title here in Antalya and booked her place in Moscow in September. The confirmation that Daniel Wenzel of South Africa has won the gold medal here in Antalya. Really interesting match. Yeah, very, very interesting. I think there was a little bit of a wobbly start, like you mentioned, and then uh, I think Daniel Vensel just took it in stride and, and made the most of what was going on, and um, that was the difference between gold and silver today. Yeah, two perfect 30s to finish uh, for the South African as well, keeping the pressure right on the American, who had, uh, well, a shaky start, but then the second end, the 26, is not what we expected from Ruiz, and... Daniel Pensel capitalized when the opportunity presented itself. But we talk about consistency all the time and the two perfect scores at the end for Wenzel is what saw her over the line. The shaky start, an uncharacteristic couple of eights from Alexis Ruiz. They were matched by a much more composed South African who just kept putting in at the tens and a high five to celebrate that perfect 30. That grouping was perhaps the best I've ever seen. But two 30s in the last two ends for Daniel Wenzel saw her across the line and the athlete from the Republic of South Africa will be on top of the podium here in Antalya celebrated by Janine van Kranenberg in the crowd and other South African teammates. Uh, Mackenzie Brown here with me mentioned the wind has got blustery. 
Uh, but it was the South African who controlled it better along with her nerves, but she sits on top in Antalya as Alexis Ruiz will have to settle for the silver medal after bronze at both the first two stages. Huang Yiju of Chinese Taipei collected the bronze. So we've had three stages so far, Medellin, Shanghai, and now Antalya. As you can see, Alexis Ruiz sits at the top. She cannot be caught on ranking points, so she's qualified, along with Sarah Lopez, So Chai Wan, and now Daniel Wenzel, who have been stage winners so far this season. So the women's tournament is complete, but coming up, it's the men's individual matches. First up, the bronze medal and then the gold medal. But first off, let's celebrate the medals. The glittering sea of the Mediterranean is matched by the glittering medals here in Antalya. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the compound women. Medals will be presented by World Archery Secretary General, Tom Dillon. <laughs> Gifts will be presented by Sports General Director Assistant, Murat Kojakaya. <laughs> Bronze medal, representing Chinese Taipei, Wang Yizhou. Well, it was an interesting bronze medal match and a bit of a surprise for everyone, including a young lady there, Huang Yiju of Chinese Taipei, takes the bronze in Antalya. Silver medal. So far this season in Medellin and United Shanghai, America, it's been bronze Alexis for 19-year-old American Alexis Ruiz. I know she wanted more here, having made the gold medal match, but she has gone one better. Turkey. Alexis Ruiz collects the silver. Gold medal representing South Africa, Danel Wenzel. But when it mattered, it was all about holding your nerve. Danel Wenzel from the Republic of South Africa did just that after a shaky first end from both athletes. It was the South African that was the stronger of mind. She is the champion of Antalya. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of South Africa.
Well, there we have it, our three medalists standing on top of the pile. Daniel Wenzel of the Republic of South Africa, who beat Alexis Ruiz in the gold medal match. Huang Yiju took a surprise victory in the final end of the bronze medal match. That's the women's individual tournament complete. So if you're enjoying this live coverage, where well, you can follow us in between events on all the usual places, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and of course, Instagram as well. So the women's tournament's done. We switch over to the men's tournament. Here's how things stand after the first two stages in Colombia and China. Braden Galantine and Mike Schlusser, stage winners at the first two events, sitting top of the pile. Chris Schaff of uh, the USA in third, followed shortly by Minos of Colombia and Pani of Italy. And it's a certainly a very interesting one. James Lutz down in seventh equal may well have a say in which two Americans go to the World Cup finals. So they call him Mr. Perfect. He's from the Netherlands, and we're used to seeing him in gold medal matches. But he is going to be competing for the bronze medal. That's Mike Schlusser, who took the title in Medellin in Colombia. So we look down a beautiful range here in Antalya as we prepare for the bronze medal match in the men's individual compound tournament here in Antalya. So the losing semi-finalist again will shoot off for bronze. And it was a tough one at the top. Mike Schlusser losing out in their shoot off to Chris Scharf. James Lutz of the USA, well, he's been the surprise package here. He beat Daniel Munoz in the semi-finals. So we'll see Schlusser going up against Munoz for the bronze medal. And the athletes are ready to come out. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the athletes to the field of play for the compound men's bronze medal match. Well, Daniel Munoz of Colombia is 30 years old, shot a 7.08 in the ranking round to be ranked sixth. Lost out in the semi finals to Lutz. And he goes Schlosser. up against Mr. Perfect, a 9.8 average arrow and a 73% match win put the stats in his favor. Mike Schlusser from the Netherlands goes up against Daniel Munoz of Colombia. You can see Schlusser, well, he has a heavier medal bag, that's for sure. But Daniel Minoz is no stranger to the podium at the World Cup stage. Schlusser shot a 7.13 in the ranking round, came through ranked first, but it was that semi-final, high quality 148 plays 148 against Chris Schaff. And in the end, a shoot off. 10 10 and then a 10x had to settle it between those two high quality athletes so schlusser is in the bronze medal match and he will shoot first the 25 year old dutchman going up against the 30 year old colombian for bronze here in antalya Dead center X. And you saw him make an adjustment right before he walked up there. It's just Mr. Perfect. Nice. Pressure on immediately. Nice. Well, 
are both drifting off to the left, and I think uh, Minos made a little adjustment there. Oh, oh, Mike, look. That might have beat Alexis' group that she had. Well, finds the middle, so the adjustment for Munoz worked, but uh, he's dropped two points in that first set. And uh, Mike Schlusser right in the center of the target. And look at these. And the first one on the spider. And all three in the X's. Mr. Perfect is his nickname, and that's why. He's pointing down the range here, Mackenzie. He's looking at the flags on the side of the range to see. I think he's looking at the flags, but I think he's also making a gesture that there's a big gap difference between where the building is, what we can feel here, and the rest of the, the field. So over half of the distance that the athletes are shooting is not impaired by structures like the stands that we're sitting in now. So I think that he may be talking a little bit about win strategy with the coach and what the reason why he made an adjustment before he walked up on that first arrow. We're trailing it by to Daniel Munoz who will shoot first in the second end of the men's bronze medal match. Yeah. Yeah. Drifted off to the left in his first two hours of the first end, but has found the middle. Links are X of the line. Incredible, but Minos has found the ten ring. Well, coordinado. Muy cómodo, muy cómodo. Eso es. And that's a good grouping as well, and a perfect score in reply from the Colombian. Well, so far, so good for Mike Schlusser. He has not dropped a single point. I mean, the quality of this archery is incredible. Schlusser shooting his second perfect 30. Uh, Daniel Munoz also finding the center as well. Almost mirror images of one another. I think uh, Mike has only dropped 110, much less anything else like he's shot all x's except for one um but just really good shooting from dan uh daniel here he's he's finally found the center i think those first two a little bit errant and then right there in the middle now yeah he found it on the third hour of the first end and he's not been off that himself and again is it just going to be one or two nines uh, that make all the difference in this high quality match Munoz has found the middle, but still trails by two, despite a perfect score of 30 in the, the second end. Taking the time clearing the range, but as you can see, the line judge declares the range safe to shoot. And Daniel Munoz will get us underway, trailing by two points against Mike Schlusser. I already get the sense that Minos has got to continue shooting these tens, and even if he does, he's waiting for a mistake from Schlusser. Yeah. 
This is quite incredible from the Dutch archer. Ten, ten, ten. Ten, ten, ten. To be fair, the reply from the Colombian is also exceptional. Oh, well then. Only dropping any points in that first end and just clean after that. Oh. Now that's gone high. It's called a nine. And it, well, there we go. It will go to a measure. And, uh, oh, yeah, it is. Difficult for us to see that one because of the other two arrows, but Kenzie, your thoughts? It's a weird it's angle. From this ten. angle, what the what the target is saying, I, I would say two. it's upgraded. Ten. But, ten. Uh, ten. And I think you may well be right. I think that has been moved yep. up it to a 10. And now another, another perfect score from Mr. Perfect, but it's a perfect score again from Daniel Munoz. Uh, the quality has gone through the roof. Two nines from the Colombian at the start of the first end. No one's missed the 10 ring since then. And there you go, the uh, 10 from Munez, three tens in fact, and this is the first two hours right next to each other for uh, Mike Schlusan. As we saw, the third arrow was marked up to a ten as well. Notice that uh, Mike has some tape on his right elbow. I asked him about that on the qualification day, and he was saying that uh, even though he hasn't played any tennis in his life, he has a little bit of tennis elbow. There you go. It doesn't seem up. to be like, impeding his ability to shoot ten. It can so be really, really off-putting tennis elbow. I can tell you, I've had it, and it's not nice. But like you say, it doesn't seem to be causing him any problems. So Munez shot two perfect thirties. Starts the fourth end. A good shot of that strapping on his back elbow. Mike Schlusser. How can Minor's reply? Nine. That's his first nine and three ends. So incredibly solid. Back in the middle. So dropping a single point here. Can Mr. Perfect keep up the perfect score so far? Wow. Yep. And it's another one. Uh, he hasn't been outside the 10 ring. Four perfect 30s in a row for Mike Schlusser. Just another day. Well, the Dutch athlete is right in the centre here. And I mean, look, what was wrong with him? That one at the top there, miles away from the spider. <laughs> uh, just, five a, centimeters. just a little bit of push, just a little extra oomph to get it up there. And uh, but still a 10. I think it's just insane how how great this grouping is. And he's got that nice group right there above the spider. And uh, well, he kept up his consistency, and even with that strapping. He nailed three tens in the fourth end. He's now leading by three points. And Daniel Minos, he's not shooting badly. A 28 to start, followed by two 30s and a 29. As Steve Meyer and the rest of the Dutch team look on in support of Mike Schlusser. Right, the pressure's really on the Dutch athlete now. Can he get the perfect score? 150 is possible for the Dutchman, but Daniel Munoz will shoot first here in this bronze medal match. It's the final end. Yeah. 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 
a good way to start the last end. Yeah, but I feel nervous for him. The 150 is on the cards. Munoz here has just got to keep his consistency and stay in the 10 ring. Bien, bien, bien. I think it's fair to say we're not going to see Schlüssel shoot much less than the 10. Oh, just on the edge there. Munoz going for a 147. And it's another perfect score from Munoz. He gets a 147. Schlüssel needs eight to win. Another liner. <laughs> what is up with all these liners? It looks like he's got another perfect 30. Five in a row. The maximum score is 150. And Mike Schlüssel has nailed it. He's got 150. And he is the winner of the bronze medal here in Antalya. But I think it's as much about the 150 as it is the bronze. Warm congratulations there from Daniel Munoz. He was up against the very best archer in Mike Schlusser. And he can. He's watching smile. to see if it's perfect, though. He's, he's got a little wry smile on his face. They are just going to go and check that final arrow. So Mike Schlusser confirmed as the winner. And it looks like the 150 is also being confirmed. That is some of the most incredible archery I've ever seen. This is great shooting, especially on a finals field. And he stays so cool, calm, and collected, but he is absolutely delighted with that 150. And I don't really think, uh, so halfway through that match, he was even thinking about the medal. He was just thinking about, can I get the perfect score? And we'll take a look back and look at how solid he is. That first arrow straight down the middle. In fact, the first three arrows all in the X's. And uh, the Colombian's response, well, was pretty good. He started putting them down the middle. Two perfect 30 in the second and third. And uh, he kept it in the middle, but just uh, one more arrow dropped out into the nine. But it was the consistency straight down the middle. And just for a bit of excitement, Schlusser ends <laughs> with one right on the line. But uh, a very hearty fist bump there from the coach. A shake of the head. And having kept that robotic look, he managed himself a smile. Well, now it's time for the gold medal match in the men's individual compound. And it's a really intriguing one. It's an all-American affair here. Chris Schaff came through a shoot off with Schlusa in the semi-finals and he's up against teammate James Lutz who dominated actually a 149 146 in his semi-final over Munoz so the two Americans go up against each other and it's very intriguing indeed the wind is now stable but the important thing here is that only two athletes her country can qualify for the finals in Moscow. The American Braden Guillantine won at the last event in Shanghai, booking his place. So Schaff versus Lutz is a really big one, and the crowd are on their edge of their seat as we look back at what the athletes had to say. Been struggling a little bit getting the bow exactly how I wanted at home. Well, she was good at home, and then as soon as you know, I come to a match or a tournament, it just you know pressure gets to me or. You know, just something isn't clicking. Uh, feels good. I was nervous, but got it done, so feels good. Well, I'm going to have to win here, because if I don't, then Jimmy's in for the U.S., and that's two, so, you know, the only chance for me to get there is to win it. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty cool, but, uh, yeah, I just got to take it one arrow at a time, and we'll see how, if I can get there. Interesting one there. Both athletes with a slightly different view on this one. 
uh, and they're waiting in the wings. It's a massive one. Chris Schoff against James Lutz, and here they come. Mackenzie, this is a massive match. Guillotine already through. Yep. He qualified by winning one of the stages. Um, you have to say that Chris Schaff is, is probably the, the favourite for this one. But a 149 for James Lutz. I mean, you look at the figures and they're, they're all on the left-hand side for uh, Chris Schaff. But that's because Lutz is in his uh, debut event. This is his first World Cup event, yeah. And I, I think that what's so interesting here is if, if Chris wins, he's guaranteed. Um, and he's already established in the rankings so far. But if... If Jimmy wins, he's going to push Chris out of the possibilities. But you you look at, at Chris's medals there yeah, that he's 14 got. 14 of them. Um, just a really impressive medal count. But also, I would say he's the seasoned archer and one potentially a little bit slanted to win this match. But you're going to say, James Lutz, uh, he's got no medals. But this is his first opportunity at his very that is first very true. senior international. Very and he's going to have a 100% record. He would have won medals at every mm -hmm. single one of his senior uh, tournaments. And I just think it's all about pressure again. Chris Schoff of the United States of America to shoot first in this gold medal match. Yeah. Well, an even better one from James Lutz, and I said this is all about pressure. All the pressure, I think, is on this man here. A win seals a place in Moscow. If Lutz does it, well, he's qualified automatically. And then it comes down to what Chris Schaff can do at the last event in Berlin, because he'll have to win to give himself a chance. He actually can't. That that's what the yep. essentially what the feature said. So, in in this case, we can only send two archers per team. So, Braden is confirmed, and then whoever is uh, ju just impeccable shooting uh, to interrupt myself of. I mean, just so tight. But. Um, Whoever wins this stage locks out the other athlete from. Well, an incredible start, as you said. Well, look at uh, how close that arrow is 0.1 of a centimeter, just one millimeter away from the middle. Uh, the other arrow just under three. But uh, Lutz, without, I don't think he has the pressure on him, but a win here will give him that place in Moscow, and he scores three tens to get himself off the mark, and all the pressure now on Chris Schaff. He looks slightly nervous. He trails here in the gold medal match. Chris Schaff will shoot first. Nice and easy, nice and smooth. Good start. I think there will be an asterisk next to that nine. It's pretty close to the line there, but uh, really strong shooting from both athletes yeah. here. There we go. Take a moment. Take your time. Well, just as you said that, yeah, good. it's locked yeah. up. It's also on the line, but it looks a little bit more secure for the ten. One more good perfect shot. Perfect score on for Scharf. Yep. Ten, 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 perfect score. Yes. 
So two potential perfect scores. Schaaf is on a 10-10-10. The first arrow from Lutz goes to the measure. We can't hear the target judge, but... Uh, Giving it a closer look, though. Yeah, Target 2 glass. is 10, 10, 10. Well, so it is upgraded to a 10. So I, I think maybe a benefit, I mean, to both athletes, I, it's really hard for me to pick which one I really want to win in this. I want both of my teammates to win. Uh, but something that's really good for Jimmy, I think, is to have Braden in his box, uh, but Chris to also have Brady in his box. Yeah, so he uh, recovered from, uh, well, <laughs> a, a bad start one night to get three tens in that second end. Yep. And again, we've stepped right, up Chris, the quality. Nice X's and, and tens from Lutz. Just one nine from Chris Schaff. But he trails by one as we go into the third end. This for gold and a guaranteed spot in Moscow. Yeah. Oh, dead center. There we go. You're in control. Yes. Yeah. Nice job, Chris. Good job, Chris. You got it. Yep. There we go. Well, another perfect score from both the athletes. And Mackenzie, uh, look, I know you're saying it's difficult for you to call it, and of course the, the two coaches, the two other athletes in the American team, uh, are there to support. But the quality is phenomenal. I'm mean, trying to forget that they're your teammates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just really good shooting from both archers. They're both just really good shooters. Um, something interesting about uh, James, he goes by Jimmy, so um, is that this is his first year shooting, this last year, sorry, this last season was his first year shooting outdoor use at events as well. So this is his... I mean, he's brand new at shooting outside like this. Well, here we look at the full match comparison between the two. You got this, look, Chris. He's doing what you're doing, man. And it's good. phenomenal. And it, it's, some are so close that, I mean, well, here we go. We have to take a real good, close look at it. One millimetre it. for, uh, well, look at that. Uh, point one of a nice millimetre between good, the two shot. closest arrows from the athletes. We're starting the fourth of this exceptional gold medal match. Chris Schaff to get us underway. Yeah, that's another 10. Go. I think I'm getting bored of saying that. Sometimes as a young athlete coming up, uh, when you look up to the exceptional athletes above you, the bar's set so high that you just think it's normal. And it seems to me that Jimmy Lutz has really yep. stepped right you're into good, you're good. Uh, potential you know, top spot for the American team. Well, I think it's good, too, that uh, his teammates have really welcomed him in and, and helped him out with stuff like your first World Cup. What do you do at your first World Cup? But uh, he knows how to shoot tens. It, it's very clear in this match. Um, and I think his teammates have made him feel welcome. Yes. Another perfect score from Chris Sharp. I'm not sure how welcome he's going to make Jimmy Lutz if he beats him here. Yes. Another brilliant 10 from Jimmy Lutz. The American 21-year-old is on for a perfect 150. 
And with Chris Sharp only dropping one point so far, it might be what's required to win this gold medal. Now, just to be clear, Mackenzie, we talked about this before. You win a stage, you go through automatically. And we've already got Braden Gillantine in and qualified for uh, the finals in Moscow. Whichever one of these two books their place in Moscow, unless it's Jimmy Lutz, because technically, Chris Schaaf can win in Berlin, and then it comes down to points between the Americans as to which two go through. That's true. Um, I, I think it also will come down to if if Jimmy does well in Berlin as well, and, and Chris happens to not be in the top uh, three. So, uh, yes, it goes down to points, and it's it's very tight and complicated, but um, we... We uh, we have two really good shooters shooting today, and, and a perfect score from Jimmy, and then also just one point from Chris that that's been out of the ten ring. Incredible. And you can see a little bit of concern on Chris Shaft's face there. He trails by just one point, having dropped just one point. We'll shoot first in the final end of this high quality gold medal match. Yes. Yeah. That one was close, but still a ten. Yeah, great. this is all Chris Schaaf can do here. Put it in the tens. He's looking for James Lutz to make a mistake here. Yes. That's even closer to the center. One more, Chris. Good, strong shot. Yes. Another 10, another perfect score from Chris Scharf, but all the pressure on now. Not only a 10 to win, but a 10 for a perfect 150. Yes! Oh, he's done it! Jimmy Lutz on his debut senior tournament not only has taken the gold medal, but he's done it in style with a perfect 150. Mackenzie, that was it just got more and more nervy as we got closer to a potential 150 but what a victory for jimmy lutz and booking his place in moscow crazy good shooting from both athletes honestly 149s will win most matches on the field a 150 is just that much better and jimmy came out and, and shot really well for his first world cup ever to win it right off the bat that's insane Astonishing stuff here from the youngster. Uh, I think there's probably a bit of mixed feeling in there because uh, you've got to feel for Chris Schaaf. But Jimmy Lutz of the USA on his debut is confirmed as the winner here in Antalya. Well, Mackenzie, you've got to feel for uh, Chris Schaaf, but this man here. Jimmy Lutz starts with three tens. Look at this. I don't think you could have fit them closer together. No. And then the response after dropping just one point in the first end from Chris Scharf is this. And then the quality was just incredible. Nothing outside the ten. And Jimmy Lutz just nailing the center of the target time and time again. And the winning shot there and a fist bump because not only did he take the victory, but he scored a perfect 150. What more can you ask for on your debut at just 21 years old? Jimmy Lutz is the champion of Antalya. So we look back on uh, the event as a whole and here's how the final standings look. James Lutt, top of the pile on his debut, beating his teammate Chris Schaff in the gold medal match. Mike Schlusser, well, he lost out to Schaff in the uh, semi-finals, but he scored a perfect score in the bronze medal match against Daniel Munoz of Colombia.
really stacked medal matches here. Just such tight scores and, and honestly only three points dropped over all four athletes and all of those arrow shots. Well, after three stages, this is how things look. Braden Gelantine, top of the par of the stage win, along with Mike Schlusser. They're qualified for Moscow. James Lutz wins here, and he's qualified. And, uh, well, we look at Chris Schaff in third place, but he hasn't won a stage yet. Well, the conditions are absolutely beautiful. The shooting has been high quality. And now it's time to celebrate those winning medals in the men's individual compound here in Antalya. Medals will be presented by World Archery Board member, Greg Easton. Gifts will be presented by wrestling Olympic champion, Ahmed Ayyub. Bronze medal, representing the Netherlands, Mike Schlosser. Well, Mr. Perfect shot a perfect 150 in the bronze medal match. And of course, that was enough to take a medal here in Antalya. Lost out in a very tight semi final with Chris Scharf. Bounced back with a 150 to take the bronze. Silver medal representing the United States of America, Chris Shaw. Uh, you got a feel for him. You got some Chris Shaw currently in the World Cup rankings at number three, but currently outside the USA places because Braden Gillanty has won a stage. So has his opponent here. Some consolation, getting another World Cup medal. It's only silver. Gold medal, representing the United States of America, James and The reason is this man on his debut. 21-year-old James Lutz. Yeah, nice way to meet has you. Come man. to Antalya, really good on that one. and he's taken the world by storm. He needed a perfect score in the final and that's just what he got a 150 out of 150 and James Lutz has put his stamp on the world of archery he is the champion of Antalya ladies and gentlemen please stand for the national anthem of the United States of America <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
Please give a warm round of applause to our athletes. Well, there we have it. James Lutz, top spot here in Antalya, beating teammate Chris Scharf in the final. Mike Schlusser of the Netherlands breaking the USA deadlock on the podium in bronze medal. Mackenzie, oh, an incredible debut for James Lutz. Yeah, really great shooting. You got a feel for Chris Scharf, though. I mean, I mean, I don't think uh, he's hiding too much there in his disappointment. Yeah, I mean, it, rightfully so. Shooting a 149 is a really impressive score, um, only to be bested by a perfect score. So I, I think I would be disappointed too. But I think he's also happy for his teammate a little bit. May take him a little while to, to be fully happy, but I, I think he's he's still happy of his teammate. Great deal of respect shown by James Lutz, though, on his debut uh, winning with a perfect score in the gold medal match. I mean, that's a pretty awesome start to your debut season and didn't really over-celebrate at the end. Yep. Well, we've had the medal ceremonies in the men's individual compound. Now it's time for the Precision Award presented by Longines. Ladies and gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the Longines Rise of Precision. So Mackenzie, um, look, I'm not going to ask you for your highlight as I usually do because we saw the highlight two 150s here from Mike Schlitter in the bronze medal match and then your teammate Jimmy Lutz in the gold medal match. But how unusual is it to see uh, the, the precision award precision. and a 150 being scored in a bronze medal match? I would say that I would be surprised because he was in the bronze medal match, but I also know that it's Mike. Um, and I know that he is always capable of shooting so many good shots and so many tens. Um, and I think that over time he was Mike able to shoot Schlosser. really well over this tournament. Yeah, he's called Mr. Perfect for a reason. I haven't seen him shoot a 150 in tournament, but he's done it here. And uh, the bar is so high now in compound archery. Two 150s. Oh, it's lovely thing to see but i suppose it's not that big a surprise anymore not surprising anymore there were quite a few that were happening in the preliminary matches to get to this point um so i mean really impressive shooting all around well schlitter with the, the precision award as he marches off the field of play the last to get the applause from the crowd here in antalya Uh, it's a great session here. Daniel Wenzel taking the women's individual title after her America, uh, sorry, her South African team won the mixed team, and James Alertz on his debut right, taking the gold in the men's individual for the United States of America. So the, the World Cup rankings are all important. Let's have a quick look back on those. The women's World Cup rankings look a little bit like this. Alexis Rue is qualified by virtue of the number of points she's scored, but the stage winners, Lopez from Colombia, So Chai Wan of Korea, and here, Daniel Wenzel, all going to Moscow later on this year. And how do the men look after the third stage here in Turkey? Well, top of the pile. It's Braden Gelantine from the USA, who's a stage winner, along with Mike Schlusser in second place. And Jimmy Lutz from the USA, also qualified by winning here. So, it's been a great day on Compound Saturday. But coming up tomorrow, it's the turn of the recurve archers. So, two more places booked for the finals in Moscow. That's it for Compound Saturday. Thanks very much for joining us. Come back tomorrow for Recurve Sunday here in Antalya. <laughs>